Good morning, Powerhouse Church. Hey, man, it's so great to see you guys this Sunday morning. We appreciate your presence very much. I'm excited to be in the house to worship with you today. Because here's the deal, I've got a lot of things to be thankful for, amen? There's a spirit of gratitude just overwhelming me this morning. And it should do us that every morning. We ought to feel that every day. We ought to look around us and see all the things that the Lord has blessed us with. Turn and look at your spouse and say, I am so thankful for the blessing that you are to me. Amen. I didn't, I didn't ask what happened outside of these walls before you got here this morning. I didn't ask you how chaotic it was. I asked you to remember that your spouse is a blessing to you from the Lord. Amen. I asked you this morning to remember that your children are a blessing from the Lord this morning, regardless of whether they couldn't find that shoe or not this morning. They are a blessing from the Lord. And I tell you what else is a blessing from the Lord this morning. It is the breath that is currently filling my lungs to speak of His goodness. Praise God. Amen. And there's a scripture, there's a psalm that says, Let every breath, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that's what we're going to do this morning. I want to encourage you guys to please stand up. I'm thankful for a worship team that corrects me even when breath isn't reaching my brain for it to function properly. But I want to tell you, I want to go back to that spirit of gratitude for a second this morning. There is something that the Lord has done for you, and you need to praise Him for it. There is a situation that He brought you out of that you never thought you would see a way through it, and He brought you through it this morning. And some of you may be in the midst of that situation and you're wondering how you are going to come out. And I'm going to tell you right now, you come out victorious on the other side. The ending of the story is already written for you. So right now, give him praise for that. Give him praise for the fact that it has already been done on your behalf this morning. Everyone, please, we're going to pray before we get started. So if you would, bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your presence among us today. Father, we thank you that you are working everything together for our good. Father, even the things that the enemy tries to change and make, make it be an evil thing to come against us, God, you're turning it around and working it for good right now in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I want to go ahead and give you the praise for deliverance from that situation that somebody's facing right now. Father, whether it's a health scare, whether it's something that they're dealing with, maybe it's a mental battle, God. Father, we're going to go ahead and thank you for deliverance. Maybe it is the chains of addiction that is holding somebody back this morning, God, and they are falling off right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, they are falling off. Father, we're going to thank you for restoration of families, God. And Father, we're going to go ahead and lift up our voice with a sense of gratitude this morning for everything that you have done for us. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise and treasures the faith. Are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Yes. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. 
tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it 
You give what we don't deserve it. You take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion and giants for when you stand undefeated. Every the authority to shut down the enemy. He gives us that authority to open up our mouths and say, no more, we're done. My God has already fought the battle and he's already won and I'm going to walk in peace. So we're going to sing that this morning. And I want you to open up your mouth and sing it. 
It doesn't matter what you sound like. I know we get worried about what everybody else is going to think, but just shout it this morning. We're going to sing that. We're going to declare authority this morning, and we're going to declare peace over our situations, and we're going to declare peace over our homes and our marriages and our relationships with our children and our family members that are lost that we've been begging to come to the Lord. We're in those times now that we don't have a minute to wait. If you know what's going on in the world, you know we don't have much longer, and I am so, so excited. So it's not the time to be quiet. It is the time to find that voice, find that lion that God has placed inside of you and open up your mouth and speak his word and declare his word over your life and over your family. So let's sing that together. Let's shout it. We ain't got to sing it. We're going to sing together this morning. When I lift my voice and shout, oh, every wall comes crashing. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, oh, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. And when I lift my voice and shout, oh, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority Hallelujah. that Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, oh, those miracles, they start breaking. You are my champion, and giants fall when you stand undefeated. Oh, every battle you won, oh, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavens. By the power of your name, I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. We thank you, Jesus. Some of us have already started praying and coming up, but we want to always extend that invitation that if you need anything, we have so many people here that are willing to meet with you and pray with you. So we're going to ask that our pastor, Pastor Brad's going to come up and be ready to pray. And is Pastor Connie here? I'm not sure if Pastor Connie is or not. Yes, if you'll come up and pray. And something that I want to encourage you, and as we, we're going to go into another song while you guys pray, but uh, there's this new song, and I don't know if you've heard it, but it's called Paul and Silas, and it talks about how they're in the prison, and they don't want to wait until morning to worship. They're in a very awful situation, and but, but going to praise anyways. They're going to praise in that moment. They're not going to wait until things are good or wait until the bad time has finally passed. They're going to praise in that moment. And I love the, the chorus because it just says, I'm not waiting until the morning. I'm going to praise the Lord right now. And I love that because it means something to me because a lot of times, and we can be honest, we wait until the good times come to really be thankful. Am I right? We do that. and We're, just, we're human. That's what we do. Sometimes we wait until those bad times pass before we're, thank you, Jesus. But what if we didn't wait? And what if we did it in those moments, whether you were happy, you were sad, you were mad, you were defeated? What if we praised in those moments? We wouldn't have to 
worry about all of the, the things that were going on in life. Because I don't know if you understand that when we praise and when we worship, there is a peace that comes with that. There is a peace that will come over you and take away all those other things. So right now, we're going we're gonna to open up these altars. I mean, they're always open, but if you specifically have felt like you need prayer or, or maybe we've been talking about salvation the past few weeks, maybe you're finally at that point where you say, I can't wait any longer. We don't want you to wait. We are ready to praise and jump and scream and shout with you. So we're going to pray, and if you need anything, come meet with them. You can even take one of us off stage if you need prayer. If you feel more comfortable, we don't care. We don't have an agenda. We don't need to be out at a specific time. The roast can wait. We're just going to praise and we're going to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship your name and to be together. God, when I sit and I think about how many people don't have that opportunity to openly worship you without fear or retribution, wow, it's amazing, God that we get to live and walk freely in your name. And God, there's nothing I can do to ever repay you or thank you enough for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. I know that I don't deserve it. God, but I'm so thankful that you knew me and that you chose me. And God, I pray this morning that if there's anybody that needs a healing from you, needs a touch, needs peace this morning, God, that they would come and find somebody to pray with them. Sometimes we can't pray for those things on our own. Sometimes we need somebody else to step in for us. And God, I pray if there's anybody here this morning that hasn't given their life to you, Lord. We talked about this on Wednesday with, our, with the youth and with the church that we have to confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that you are the Lord and that we believe that you sent your son to die for us. So if there's anybody here this morning, God, that needs that, God, I pray that you would make it so they couldn't sit down in their seat until it happened. God, we thank you for this church. We praise you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name. Sits on hey. 
It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your head, lay back against you and breathe and feel your heart beat. Cause this love is so deep. We still have some talking, and that's okay. I want to thank you guys for being so reverent to what was going on. I'm really excited because I think we got some big news in what just happened this morning, and I think that that's amazing. Um, we're going to go ahead and somebody get the lights for us, if you will. If you guys have your Bibles, I literally brought mine and I left it back there again. <laughs> but if you'll go ahead and get out your Bibles this morning, I'm excited. Pa uh, Pastor Brad is going to be speaking this morning. And a quick announcement because every time I tell Brad, he forgets, and that's okay. But um, I told you guys that we would have uh, some, like a semi sign up this morning for camp. I'm going to go do that right now because I'm not going to lie to you, I forgot. <laughs> it's been a week, so I'm going to have that ready. Um, uh, this morning, what they said we we're going to do for camp, we get to sign up in two weeks, I believe. Um, if you have a child that's going to go to camp, um, the church is going to help pay for their deposit, and we're going to raise money, and they're earning points. Even today, watching our kids for the marriage classes, they're going to start earning points for bringing their Bibles on Wednesday nights. Yes. Um, things like that. What? What? 
not your phone, an actual hard copy Bible. And if you don't have one, we've got like seven boxes full of Bibles that we will give you one gladly. Um, but the church is asking that you pay $50 to sign your kid up. And what that's doing is to secure and know that they're not going to back out later on. If you don't have that today, that is okay. We just need it at least by when we sign up, which is November 1st. So I'm going to get that ready, and I'll be out there to do a quick sign up um, right after church um, before our marriage class starts, if that's okay. All right, if you have your Bibles, throw them on up there. My Duncans, there we go. All right, let's say this together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never in Jesus' name. Hug somebody's neck. Tell them you love them. Shake their hand, whatever you're comfortable with. Give them a big squeeze. And we're going to dismiss our children who are going to walk. Gently, nicely, smoothly. Yes. All right. Our kiddos, bye. I'm sorry you almost fell asleep. That doesn't make me feel very good. <laughs> My kid, right? See ya. All right. Pastor Brad is going to come give us the message this morning. I better put my shoes on. Or as William calls these, these are my Jesus 3000s. Says that it looks like I walk through Jerusalem in them. It's really nice. Um, but something before we go, um, while the kids are out of here, um, parents, I, I say, I talked about camp while they're in here, so they'll bug you. It was completely on purpose. Please send them with us. I'm begging you to give me your child for a week. It is amazing. Um, and if you can't tell, our kids are really stinking awesome. Every Sunday morning and Wednesday night, they do not care if they know who you are or not. If you are up here praying, they are surrounding you. And how amazing is that? That's what we're teaching our kids. That's what we're seeing in our next generation of our kids, that they don't care what it is you're praying for. And my kids personally are, are up here, and I don't think they know what they're praying or how to do it, but they're up here. And I notice my baby, every time she comes up, she's looking at me to see if it's okay, and I'm like, it's awesome. All of these kids are ready to pray, and I think that's great, and that's what we want to continue to teach them. So please send your kids with me for a whole week. I'll give you a break, okay? All right. Amen, she says. Hey, man, i got to take mine with me. All right. I'm excited to be with you guys this morning. Praise God for everything that just happened. Hey, praise God, seriously. Every wall that was taken down, every person that was restored, every body that was healed in the name of Jesus. So exciting to see. And I'm excited to see our youth continue to grow. Um, you guys are doing a great job. You guys are doing a great job. I'm not talking about just having the kids. I'm talking about bringing them into the church atmosphere, bringing them into the church family. Guys, these kids are understanding concepts and principles that most kids don't understand till. They're an adult, and they're exposed to Jesus. Uh, my kids understand a lot more than I think I probably ever understood at age five. I'd have to ask my parents. I really haven't gone there, and it's a good question for them, so I'll have to remind me. I'll ask you about that. But my kids know so many scriptures. They know who they come from. They know who's in charge. Yesterday, we were in Day Spring, uh, getting a few things for ourselves and for the church, and it was Adeline's birthday, and she was wearing a princess dress. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, she wears a princess dress like once out of every four or five days. So don't think it's her birthday next time you see her wearing a princess dress. She just, I think she's dressed up as Superwoman. So thank you, Aunt Wanda. We appreciate that. Uh, but she was in there, and an, a, a couple was in front of us, and they said, well, don't you look pretty today? And she said, today is my birthday, which it really wasn't. It was her birthday party, but close enough. And they said, oh, that's great. And so they started talking to us, and uh, the lady said, well, what's your, what's your name? Or no, the husband said, what's your name? And she said, my name's Adeline. And he said, oh, that's so pretty. He said, who gave you that name? And she said, Jesus. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, these kids understand who gave them their name. These kids understand who knew them before they were even formed in the womb. So you guys are doing a wonderful job. And I'm very proud to be a part of this church family. To see the exponential growth that we've had over the last months, few months. Look around at you. You hardly see a empty seat. And praise God for that. Praise God that we may be having to look at being creative and possibly even building something bigger because of the discipleship that you guys are partaking in. And so I want to tell you guys how much we appreciate you. We appreciate uh, the, the fact that you guys are being obedient to what the Word has called you to do. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 4 this morning. So if you've got your Bibles with you, turn to Matthew chapter 4. And... I want to tell you, I want to clarify something real quick. I told Tierra that the kids only get points for bringing their actual physical Bible. The reason being is because most of us have our phones with us all the time. Most of these kids have their phones with them 24-7. And I'm going to tell you right now, your phone is not your Bible. Your phone is a means of communication. For a lot of people, your phone is a means of distraction. Whenever you're in this word, there is no distraction. There is no app going off. You don't get a notification. You're clearly able to focus on what it is that God has written and what it is that he wants you to see. So that's why we want to encourage the kids to bring their their actual physical Bible. And I would encourage you to bring yours as well. Not saying that you can't use your phone, because obviously you can, and I understand the technological world that we live in. Uh, But we're going to be, like I said, in Matthew chapter 4 this morning. And I want to give you a little bit of backstory. So if we go back to chapter 3... We see that Jesus has encountered John the Baptist, and he is baptized. And we see that after he was baptized by John the Baptist, it says the heavens opened up to him, and the Spirit descended like a dove and alighted upon him. And then this is when we hear those words come down from heaven. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And then when we go on to chapter 4, and I want to remind you to not read the books in those chapters. Those chapters were put there whenever they did the Bible. They weren't there whenever the original text was written. This is all one continuation. So for context purposes, read the chapter before and the chapter after. I'm just going ahead and give you some, ad- some advice and some information on that. So we go on to chapter 4, and it says, After the baptism and after... God has said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We see in verse 4 that Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. And that's where we're going to pick up in verse 1. It says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, afterward he was hungry, I bet. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. In verse 7, Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And in verse 8, it says again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Before we go any further into this message, I forgot to pray, so we're going to pray real quick. Father, I want to thank you for your anointed word. Father, I want to thank you for the fact that we have this uh, word to guide us throughout our lives, that we have this word to look for to wisdom, God. 
and how it is that you want us to operate while we're here on earth. And Father, I pray right now that the words spoken today would be received by the hearer God. And Father, that they would go out and use those things that they are taught today, God, from your word. Father, we ask that you bless the hearer God and bless the speaker. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we go back to uh, verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 3. In chapter 4, and it says, Now when the tempter came to him, it said, If you are the Son of God. Isn't that kind of interesting? What did God just call Jesus? The beloved Son of God. What does Satan call him? Just Son. Just the Son of God. Satan's really good about twisting things, trying to make you feel less valuable than what God has placed your value at. Amen? Amen. And then if we look down at verse 11, I want to point this out real quick. It says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Ministered there, we a lot of the times use minister like me. I'm, I'm preaching, I'm ministering to you. I'm, no, the angels came and cared for him. Guys, think about this. He had not had food for 40 days and 40 nights. And he had been tempted by the enemy. And it says the angels came, and they cared for him. They ministered to him. The reason I bring this certain passage of Scripture up today is because I have a lot of people ask me, how do you respond to attack of the enemy? How do you respond? I get so frustrated. I feel like I'm constantly under attack. And I want to tell you right now, if you're constantly under attack, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing something wrong. A lot of the times the enemy comes and attacks you because you're doing the right thing or trying to do the right thing. How many of you guys have ever been faced at a crossroads? And you know the right path that you're supposed to go down. You know where Jesus has told you to go. You know the calling God has placed upon your life. And it's so timely the enemy comes and tempts you to go back to the old way. He tempts you to go back into bondage. He tempts you to go back and try to resurrect that old man that you have put to death. Okay? I get the question, what do I do? How do I respond? And I want to share that with you today. A lot of you are undergoing attacks in your relationships, family matters, money, health, both physical and mental. And I want to show you guys how to respond to the attack of the enemy. But first, before we do that, I want to dive into um, how Satan decided to attack Jesus. Because I think it's very important because we can draw a lot of similarities off of these. So look at this first one. It was a time of weakness in his flesh, as I just mentioned. Jesus had spent 40 days and nights fasting. And what does the tempter do? He tells him to command the stones to be turned into what? Into bread. Jesus, I know you're hungry, man. You hadn't ate for 40 days. Guys, I'm hungry if I hadn't ate for 40 minutes. Amen. Come on. Some of y'all, men, amen me. We like to eat. I like to eat. I'm starving after 40 minutes of not eating. And what does he do? He tempts him. Hey, man, if you're hungry, just turn those stones into bread. Maybe a nice pepperoni pizza. I'm fancy a cake. It's kind of my alley. I like cakes. I like sweets. So he attacks him when his flesh is weak. But listen to this. Jesus does not regard his flesh. How does Jesus respond to that temptation? He says, no, no, no. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, I don't just hunger in the flesh. I hunger in the spirit. And you see, my spirit is filled because I'm full of the word of God. Amen. And then look at the second example. He challenges his authority. He challenges his authority in the second temptation. Jesus is aware here that he has authority, but I want to tell you, he also understands that God has implemented natural laws for which man is to live by. Did you know that? There are natural laws for which man is to live by. If you're hungry, you have to use your hand and pick up food and put it in your mouth to eat. Okay? There's a natural law called gravity. Jesus was abiding by that natural law. How many of you all know that if I climb up on this roof here at Powerhouse Church and I jump off, I'm probably going to be seriously injured. Why? I can't fly. 
God did not give me wings. Not I have them. I just hadn't got them yet. When I transcend, praise the Lord. And I'll race you when we get there. But I don't have wings. I can't fly. So what's going to happen to me if I jump off the roof? But yet the enemy says, oh, no, 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 but you're Jesus. Surely the angels will come and take you and they'll let you dash your foot upon a stone, right? What did Satan use right there? He used the word. He actually used the word against Jesus. So Jesus is not going to challenge anything that God has already set forth. Yes, Jesus has authority. But there's already been a law that supersedes that authority. It says there's a natural law of gravity that's in place, okay? And then he also tempts him with earthly gain, and that's one of the biggest things that we are tempted with today. It's one of the biggest things that we are tempted with today. What does the culture of today sell you? It sells you money, riches, fame. And it's really just fame. It's really just fame. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you have all the riches that you need if you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And God desires to prosper you. But it's really the fame. Look at what he tempts him with there. Look at what he tempts him with there. He says, I t- he took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And we're seeing so many people today, guys, sadly, that are choosing to fall down and worship their flesh. They're choosing to chase after the desires, the lustful desires of their flesh, as opposed to pursue the rightful plan that God has for them. They're confused. They're confused. And so those are the things, those are the ways that Satan's going to try to get to you. He did the same thing to Jesus. What makes you think that he's not going to do the same thing to you? See, the enemy's way is deception. He realizes he has no power. But if he can deceive you into thinking that he does, that's how he gains a stronghold. That's how he gets his foot in the door. He manipulates things. His scheme has always been deception. As I mentioned in that second temptation, Satan quoted Psalm chapter 91, verse 12. Satan, guys, the tempter, the destroyer, what did he do? He quoted Scripture and tried to get Scripture to go against Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to argue with Scripture. He did the exact same thing in the garden. What did he do to Eve? Surely you shall not die. No, Jesus or God had told Adam and Eve, if you eat of this tree, you shall die. What does the serpent do? The tempter do in the garden. He says, surely you will not die. That's not, oh, that's not what God said. Come on. He's trying to deceive people into making the wrong decision. He's doing the same thing today. So the, going back to the central theme of this message is, what am I supposed to do, Pastor? I'm facing an attack right now. What am I supposed to do? And I want to tell you right now, you take an answer, you answer the way that Jesus answered is what you do. You take a page out of Jesus' playbook in Matthew chapter 4. What does Jesus say before answering him all three times? It is written. And that's the title of the message today. So I want to encourage you right now, whenever you're facing a battle, maybe you're going through something right now, you need to go to the enemy and say, oh, no, it is written. It is written. And I want to give you guys some key scriptures that you can use. And I was writing these down. And I thought, Lord, help me filter through the scriptures that you want me to share today. Because, guys, if I really wanted to, we could be here all day. I could go to every scripture for every situation. But I want to share with you guys what I think, what I believe, is the most pertinent ones that we battle today. So if you guys will bear with me, I'm going through a lot of scriptures. I'm going through a lot of scriptures. But I promise you, it will be worthwhile. Whenever we have the enemy come against our health. Whenever we have the enemy come against our health, you need to say, it is written. 
who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes, Jesus' stripes, you were healed. That's 1 Peter 2.24. So whenever the enemy is coming against your health, you can say, no, it is written. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed, and I'm going to rest in that healing. Whenever it's coming against your family, it is written in Psalms 91.10, No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. No plague should come near your dwelling. I see a lot of families that are like, man, we've just got something going through the household. Whenever you start to feel that, Psalm 91.10. Gather together as a family and pray Psalm 91.10. No. No evil shall befall me. And nor plague will come near my dwelling. Anxiety. Anxiety is a big one we see today in the world. And I think it's interesting that I put this one up here because it happened to me this morning on the way here. You get anxious, Pastor? Yeah. I do. I'm human. I'm human. And on the way here to church this morning... I felt anxiety about preaching this morning. I felt anxiety about we're having the marriage class and, and may, I, I you know, want that to go well. And, and it was like the enemy was just coming against me. The enemy was just coming against me. And I said, no, you can't do this. You're just going to have to, you know, you're, you're just going to have to figure something out. You're going to have to just call Carney. He's going to have to preach this morning. And he would have been ready because he's ready in season and out of season. But I'm going to tell you right now, here's what I did. I took my authority and I said, Satan, it is written. I will be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I will let my request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. So get out of my truck. That's what I said. I said, get out of my truck. Because it is written, and I'm going to stand on this word right here, because this is who I really am. And if you're facing a battle of anxiety today, if you're facing an anxiety attack, if there's some situation that you find yourself getting anxious about, I want to encourage you right then, you say it is written, and you read that scripture. Some of you are facing a battle of lack, or you're in a place of poverty. You've got a poverty mindset that you need to break out of. Guys, Ader County is one of the poorest places in Oklahoma. We hear that all the time. I'm going to tell you right now, you are not poor. You are not poor. You are blessed and highly favored. So anytime the enemy cut, tries to come against you and say, oh, you know what, you've just got to stay in a place of lack. You've got to stay in a place of poverty because you were born in Adair County. That's all you're going to be is from Adair County, and there's nothing that can change that. You need to say, you know what, it is written, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Notice how it didn't say, my God shall supply all your need according to his provision, his meager abundance. What does it say? Riches, an abundance, an overabundance. It's coming out of the storehouse. Amen. Amen. If you have a worrisome mind, it is written in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. If you're feeling defeated this morning, it is written, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and be careful to observe them. That's Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. You are the head and not the tail. You are not defeated. You are not defeated. Also, yet in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him who loved us, Romans 8, 37. You need to say, it is written, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. If you're feeling weak or powerless today, I want to encourage you. It is written in Luke 10, verse 17 through 19. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And 
nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. If you are feeling inadequate or incomplete, which is a huge problem I see in the world today, and guys, it's attacking our youth left and right. It's attacking our youth left and right. You need to remind them, it is written about you, child, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. You are complete in him. It's another thing that's attacking our youth today. Unworthiness, shame, or blame. You need to remind the enemy, it is written, Satan, and I, who once I was alienated in enemies in my mind by wicked works, yet now I have been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present myself holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Colossians 1, 21 through 22. Do you, guys, do you realize that today? You are holy and blameless in his sight. I want to tell somebody right now that's carrying shame, put it down. You don't own that anymore. It's not yours. Cast it off. Cast it off. If you're feeling condemned, if the enemy's trying to get after you and say, oh, no, man, there's just no hope for you. There's just no hope for you. Your fate's already been sealed. You need to remind Satan, it is written, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In Romans 8, verse 1. And the last one I want to leave you with, for those of you that are feeling like you are separated from God's love, you need to remind Satan, for it is written, that I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no thing, there is no thing, there is no device the enemy has ever created or will ever create that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. That is how loved you are. That is how valuable you are to the Most High King. That He sent His only Son. He sent His only Son so you could become a son. So you could become a daughter. Guys, I could go on and on. I could go on and on for every situation that you may face. I could. But here's the thing. I can't be there for you every time that attack comes. You have to be the one that says, it is written. And how can you be the one that says, it is written, if you don't know what's written? How can you stand in the face of the enemy and say, back up, because it is written without you understanding what is written? So I want to encourage you guys today. You have to get in this word. You have to understand who you are. You have to understand what authority you have. You have to understand what promises have already been given unto you. And then I want to tell you, though, you can't stop there. You can't stop there. There's another part that you have to do. You have to believe. See, it's one thing. I can say it is written. Man, that sounds great. Satan, you better back up. It is written. But if I don't believe it, I'm still going to be defeated. If I don't believe it, I'm still going to be defeated. I want you guys to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, really quickly. It says, For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. How does the word of God work in you? You have to believe. You have to believe. 
no second guessing, no doubting. If it says it about me, it's true and it's mine because Jesus purchased it for me. You did nothing to earn it, nothing to earn it. And the last thing we must do, and I'm going to tell you this in closing, you must speak the word of God as Jesus did. It needs to come out. You need to vocalize the word of God. You need to speak it in those situations. You have to be able to say, it is written. You must believe the word, and then you must speak the word. The word is powerful, guys. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. There are power in your words. There's power in the word of God. Listen to Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So what does it say? It will, not it may, it will accomplish what the Lord pleases, and it will, not possibly, not probably, it will definitely prosper the thing for which he sent it. And I've got a question for you this morning. Are you going to trust in what the Word says about you? Are you going to trust in what the Word says about you? You see, in the world today, we get caught up in a war of words with people, with the enemy. And the reason we feel so defeated is because you're using your own words to fight him. You're using your opinion to fight him. You're using this limited mind to fight him instead of using the words given to you by God instead of using the authority that you have. So qu quit trying to battle the enemy on your own and start doing it the way that Jesus did. How many of you agree that Jesus' way is probably better than your way? The only perfect person to ever walk on the face of this earth. I guarantee it's better than my way. And guys, there are things, there are times where it's going to tell you to be patient in there. And you're like, I don't, I don't like patient. I want an answer right now. I want to see the enemy trampled on right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you right now, there's some people, I want to see them trampled on right now. And it's not the people. It's the spirit living inside of them. They are oppressed. And they need to leave. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're already defeated. And that's what the scripture tells you. You get to rest in that victory. You get to understand it's already happened. You're like, well, I just can't wait to see it happen. You have to see it happen first, spiritualized, before you can see it happen with your natural eyes. Guys, I want to encourage you today. You guys have asked me. I've had people ask me. I just don't know where to turn. Guys, I'm going to tell you the only place I know where to turn, and it's right here. This has every answer to every question that I'll ever have. Okay? This perfectly defines who I am. Do I look like it all the time? No. I don't. I sure try. I sure try. As I told you, I come under attack this morning. And I had to go here. I had to go here. Don't you think it's interesting? We talk about putting on the full armor of God, and we teach our kids this. If you were raised in Sunday school, how many of you guys remember doing the, the little artwork, right? He did the little helmet. He did the shield. You ever notice this is the only thing of offense? The sword. The sword. This is how you fight back. Everything else protects you, but this is how you fight back. This is how you become victorious right here. It's trusting in the word of God and trusting in everything it says about you. I want to ask everyone please stand. And I want to have a moment just real quickly. If everyone would, please bow your heads and close your eyes. And we're going to pray before we close. But there was some 
amazing things that took place today while we were just praising God. Amazing things. The word says, for a spirit of heaviness put on the garment of praise. And that's what happened this morning. And you see, when we put on the garment of praise, the spirit of heaviness fell off. Addictions fell by the wayside this morning. People realized who they were in Christ Jesus, and they came to experience a relationship with him today. And I want to tell you, if that moment came and went for you, and you knew that you were supposed to be obedient to the Spirit and what it was he was asking you to do, if that was you this morning that said, hey, I'm ready to enter into that relationship with you, and I know you're ready to enter into it with me. If that was you this morning and you didn't get a chance to do that, we're going to offer you that chance with every head bowed and every eye closed. So if that's you this morning, if you said, hey, he called me and I didn't answer. I know I'm supposed to be in a relationship with him. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If he's calling you into that relationship this morning, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. If there are some of you that say, hey, I was there, and I don't know what happened. Life kind of got in the way, and, and I know I'm supposed to be obedient. But, man, just things have c come up between the relationship that I have with God, and I'm ready to come back. Some of you had stepped away from your calling for a little bit. He's calling you back today. The callings of the Lord are without repentance. It never stops. And if that's you, raise your hand. If that's you. Praise God. Praise God. All right, with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to pray. And after we're done praying... I want you to, or as we're praying, I want you to thank God for everything he has done for you. I want you, to th I want you to thank him for the times he has supernaturally intervened in your life. You knew there was no way that thing got done without it being God. It was a healing that took place. Maybe it's a set of circumstances that were moved and changed in a way that no one could earthly explain. But I want you to thank him. And if that's you who raised your hand, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Father, we thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son. Father, that he came to this earth and experienced everything that we were supposed to experience. He took the punishment for our sin. Father, he bore it all and took our place so we could take his rightful place. Father, that we could take our place in heaven with you. Father, I'm thankful right now for the souls that have come forward today and said, you know what? I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not in that relationship that I'm supposed to be with you. And Father, right now, I thank you for them entering that relationship. And if that's you right now, I want you to say these words. Father, thank you for loving me. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to take my sin away from me. Father, I thank you for the sacrifice on the cross. And Father, I welcome Jesus into my heart this morning where he will forever reign. Amen. Amen. And if that's you this morning that said, I've just kind of walked away. I've just kind of walked away. Things got busy, and I didn't put him in the right place. He wasn't the priority that I needed. he needed to be in my life. If that's you. I want you to say this prayer with me. Father, I want to thank you for grace this morning. Father, I want to thank you for allowing me to come back to you. Father, I thank you. You have never left me. You have never forsaken me, and you are not about to start. And Father, I thank you for renewing that relationship right now in Jesus' name.
Father, I thank you for deliverance from addiction today. Father, I thank you for healing in people's body and in their minds. Father, I thank you that financial situations have been turned. And Father, we no longer have to live in a place of poverty, God, but Father, we are prosperous because of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for our humble spirits today, God, as we've come before you. And Father, everybody under the sound of my voice understands it's nothing that they have done. There is no work that we could do to earn your mercy and your favor and your grace. But it is solely because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And Father, we are thankful that because of Jesus, we are made holy and blameless today. And we ask all those things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for being here today. If you are attending the marriage class, I would encourage you, please stay here in the sanctuary. Please stay here in the sanctuary. Go out and get your kids. Bring them back to the sanctuary if you're attending the marriage class. Also, youth camp sign up in the back. Go see Sister Tierra. She will gladly take your kids for a week and let you have a real summer break.